Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us for the Ruskin uh, Wednesday uh, webinar session. I am Kent Mounty, the product manager for the Life Safety Dampers. Today, I will be talking about ceiling fire dampers, CFDs, or as others may call them, C ceiling radiation dampers, CRDs. Uh, some of the topics we'll be talking today about is UL555C standards and ratings, ceiling damper code requirements, horizontal assemblies, installation requirements, and ceiling damper uh, misapplications. Uh, starting out here is ceiling fire dampers, CFDs, or ceiling radiation damper, CRDs, are a device that uh, intended to limit the passage of flame and heat through or around the damper and to limit the amount of heat that passes through the damper at penetrations of the ceiling membrane or horizontal fire resistance rated assembly. Uh, for the the UL standard for ceiling dampers is UL555C. This standard is used to evaluate ceiling radiation dampers for the use in lieu of a hinge door type damper. The original ceiling dampers were called hinge door types because of their construction. The hinge door uh, could vary in steel gauges, but had both surfaces covered with 1 16th thick ceramic fiber paper and was held open with a fusible link. Ceiling dampers for use in uh, specific uh, fire resistance design, alter alternative designs, some floor ceiling or roof ceiling assembly designs, specifications, one or more uh, ceiling radiation uh, damper. Dampers covered by this method of evaluation are generally tested along with the design constructed and in accordance with the standards for fire tests of building construction of materials. More on this type of later. For the UL555C fire test, the damper is installed in a current UL fire resistance floor ceiling or roof ceiling assembly. The actual installation method is determined by the manufacturer of the damper. The furnace is then lit and the ceiling assembly is burned for one hour. During the test, temperature readings are taken at multiple points on top, so on the top side of the assembly and within the ceiling cavity. While the uh, assembly is burning, there, it, there are, uh, all right, after the assembly was burning, there is, all right, there's water-filled uh, tanks sitting on top of the assembly to assimilate a load on the structure. After one hour of burning, uh, the burner is turned off and the fire is put out. The assembly must stay in place and the damper must still be in the same place as installed. For those of you thinking that drywall material, give, uh, material gives you a one hour rating, that is not exactly true. The drywall material fell off of the ceiling around 45 to 50 minutes into the fire test. Once the damper passes the fire test, the manufacturer's damper model can be added to the design or a new ceiling design number will be assigned for that product. Ceiling dampers can have a fire resistance rating from one hour up to four hours, depending upon the structure they are installed in. Note, wood joists and wood truss assemblies only have a one hour fire resistance rating. For the building codes, uh, horizontal assemblies, uh, this is where many people get confused on what type of damper can be used. I mean, I will try to help clear this up for you. 
First, through penetrations, depending upon the occupancy type and how many stories uh, the building is, you may only need a fire damper in the assembly, or you may need to have to build a fire, uh, a rated shaft. If the shaft wall is penetrated, uh, then the shaft wall could be penetrated with a fire damper and, or FSD would be applied. And if there is a membrane penetration only, sealing fire dampers, and, and this is what we are all here to talk about today, is the sealing radiation dampers. Let's first examine uh, the through penetration application. As shown here in the building code, uh, would be uh, would allow duct connection, two stories only, to be penetrated with a damper, or uh, and and not a rated shaft. However, this can only be done in new uh, non-combustible floor ceiling assemblies. This application would require a fire damper at the floor line and a radiation sealing damper at the lower membrane penetration. A sealing membrane penetration is where radiation dampers are applied. In this example, duct coming off a unit penetrating through a lower membrane then runs horizontally through the ceiling cavity, all openings would be protected by a ceiling damper. This is a typical arrangement often seen in apartments, condos, assisted living, and other similar structures. Now comes the tricky part. What model of CFD should I be using? The answer, er, the, the answer to that question, let's review the different models. Let's start with the CFDs that are used in place of the hinge door. First, the CFD3, which is a rectangle damper uh, with area up to 70 square inches without blade installation. The CFD2 is a damper up to above 70 square inches to 324 square inches with blade installation. The CFD4 is a rectangle uh, assembly, but above 324 square inches to 576 square inches with blade installation. Then you have the CFD R3, the round unit, which is up to 10 inch diameter without blade insul insulation. And the CFD R2, which is at above 10 inch diameter through 20 inch diameter with blade insulation insulation. Next is uh, the CFD5 for laying ceilings or diffusers uh, with a small neck line. With a diffuser with a smaller neck, the CFD5 should, should be used. The CFD5 or CFDR5 are supplied with a TIB, which is a mineral wool thermal insulation blanket or a RCF, a refractory ceramic fiber thermal insulation black kind of blanket that is to use to cover the backside of the diffuser as it's depicted in the picture. And next is a CFD8. This is a low profile damper used just like the CFD2 series, but where space is restricted. Then we move to wood construction. The CFD7 uh, is a rectangle damper designed to be installed in either 2x10 or 2x12 solid wood joists. Also, the CFD7 is UL listed to be used in steel channel joist assemblies. The CFD7T is a rectangular damper designed to be installed in wood open uh, in wood open web trusses. The CFDRT is the same open web tr truss type damper, but a true round uh, ceiling radiation damper for wood. 
let's move to which CFD uh, you should you you should be selecting. And what's saying that is we move to the architectural prints that show and should show and call out a roof ceiling or floor ceiling plans and description. In the description of the plans, in most cases, are called out on the uh, call out a design number. This design number is the most important item on the drawing. With this number, we can look up the design and determine which damper should be used in that assembly. So let's review how we would look this up. Uh, if you have the design number, it is simple as going to the ul.com, look and find the uh, online certification directory, which is usually at the bottom right-hand corner of the page, you enter the uh, design number into the UL file uh, number and uh, just click uh, uh, search and from there you will be able to pull up the ceiling design number you put into the, the search box. For example, is this here we run a search, we called up uh, design number L558. Since we uh, know design number, we look up uh, the UL ceiling design. We have reviewed this design. You can see that uh, damper is item number four. And when you look up item number four, you can see all manufacturer models listed in this assembly. The models is uh, basically has Ruskin and all of our competitors called out. When going through that design, uh, the first thing you know, I want to bring to your attention is the height of the wood trusses. All wood trusses have a minimum height of 18 inches, no matter whose damper it is called out on the design. So you cannot do a 14 inch tall truss assembly with a UL listed damper. Next is called out is the maximum damper size for the model that is called out. Not all manufacturers have the exact same size and some have smaller units they could use. And last is the maximum number of openings uh, or, dam or dampers you can have in a 100 square foot area. So this does get confusing, but this is very important information. For the architects and engineers, I would like to point out ceiling de designs L528, L558, L574, and P533. These are the main ceiling uh, designs owned by the drywall manufacturers. When specifying a roof ceiling or floor ceiling design, Using one of these designs will allow the contractor to select any of the multiple damper manufacturers that are listed on these designs. Yes, there, I mean, there are other uh, over a hundred or so uh, ceiling designs out there. For example, Ruskin is listed on more than 30 designs. I would like to uh, help clear which uh, up which design to be used, uh, but the few designs listed above are the universal designs that everyone can use and makes uh, no proprietary uh, re I mean, references for their products only. Next is we have installation, instead of going through all the different installation types that we have, I just want to reference that Ruskin has YouTube videos for the CFD-7 and the CFD-7T installation out there. So you can see all the different ways that the damper can be installed in the proper installation. Uh, something that is new, and this here is a steel truss assembly. 
uh, design number H502. This is a Ruskin exclusive steel truss assembly H502, and this is the only steel truss assembly that has a ceiling fire damper called out on its design. So Rus this is a Ruskin exclusive. Some misapplications. Uh, one thing that is common in a misapplications is that people use a horizontal mount curtain fire damper in place of a CFD in the application. This is n a, uh, not a UL listed installation and needs to be vo uh, voided at all costs. If uh, you use a curtain damper in this application, you may be required to re remove the dampers and replace them with the proper model for that application. Another misapplication is eye joists. At this time, no manufacturer has a UL 555C tested ceiling damper for any eye joist ceiling design. Please contact your local authority if you're working with any eye joist assemblies. So now after that quick little uh, webinar here, uh, we will be open for questions and, uh, from, and go from there. So please ask your questions. Uh, this webinar is, has been recorded and will be available uh, in uh, the next day or two for you to uh, replay at anyone's office as necessary. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, email me at k Mounty at ruskin.com and I would be glad to answer any of your questions. So at this time I want to thank you uh, for uh, your spending your time with us today and next month is uh, webinar is going to be Wednesday June 13th and it will be louver selection and applications uh, presented by Peter Blaha. So uh, everyone have a great day and We'll be talking to you next month. Thank you.